Hello friends, welcome to EdSpot. We're gonna start class 6 Geography and CRT. So before we actually begin, if you are new to this channel, do subscribe it and hit the notification bell to all so you can get notification for every video we upload. So without any further ado, let's get started. So the first chapter is Earth in the Solar System. If you see friends, what a treat it is to observe the sky after dusk. One might first catch sight of one or two dazzling stars in the sky. You will soon notice the number rising. You can no longer count them. The entire sky gets covered in tiny glowing objects, some bright and some dull. The sky appears to be covered in diamonds. All of them seem to be blinking. But if you pay close attention to them, you'll see that some of them don't twinkle as much as others do. They simply glow without flickering, just like the moon. On the majority of these days, you may also see the moon in addition to these dazzling objects. However, it might show up at various times, in various shapes and in various locations. The full moon only appears around once every month. It is Purnima or full moon night. And after a fortnight later, there will be new moon night or Amavasya, when the moon doesn't appear in the sky. If the night is clear, this day is ideal to view the night sky. Do you ever wonder why we can't see the moon or any of those tiny bright objects during the day? It's because the sun's intense brightness prevents us from seeing all those tiny bright objects in the day sky. The sun, moon and any other objects appear in space called celestial bodies. Some celestial bodies are enormous and extremely hot. Gases make up their composition. They produce a great deal of heat and light on their own. Stars are the names given to these celestial bodies. Our sun is also a star. The sun is like one of the many glittering lights in the night sky. However, because they are so away from us, we cannot feel their heat or light and they appear incredibly small. You must have observed that everything appears smaller from a distance. When an aeroplane is flying very high, it seems very tiny. You could spot variety of patterns in the night sky created by distinct star groups. They are referred to as constellations. One such constellation is Ursa Major or the Big Bear. The Saptarishi, Seven Sages constellation is among one of them and which is easily recognizable. It is a collection of seven stars that is a part of the Ursa Major constellation. With the aid of stars, people used to identify directions at night in ancient times. The North Star points in the direction of the North. The Pole Star is another name for it. It stays in the same spot in the sky at all times. With the aid of the Saptarishi, we can determine where the Pole Star is located. You will see that the Pole Star will be pointed at if an imaginary line is drawn connecting the pointer stars and is stretched farther. Some celestial planets lack heat and light on their own. They are illuminated by the starlight. These objects are known as planets. The Greek term planitia which means wanderers. The English word planet originates. Our home planet Earth is a planet. The sun our nearest star provides all of its heat and light. The Earth will appear to be shining exactly like the moon if we observe it from a long distance like the moon. For example, the moon that we see in the sky is a satellite. It is companion of our Earth and moves around it. Like our Earth, there are seven other planets that get heat and light from the Sun. Some of them have their moons too. The solar system is made up of the Sun, eight planets, satellites and few other asteroids and meteorites with the sun as its height. We frequently refer to it as a solar family. The solar system's center is the sun. 
It is enormous and composed of incredibly hot gases. It supplies the gravitational pull that holds the solar system together. The solar system's primary source of heat and light is the sun. Although it is our nearest star, we do not feel its intense heat very much because it is so far away from us, about 150 million kilometers between Earth and the sun. The solar system contains eight planets. They are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune in order of their distance from the sun. The mnemonic for this to remember is, my very efficient mother just served us nuts. It's a simple way to remember the names of the planets in order of their distance from the sun. The solar system's eight planets all follow set routes as they round the sun. These routes are extended. They are known as orbits. Nearest to the sun is Mercury. A whole orbital round only takes roughly 88 days to complete. Because of how much Venus resembles the planet in terms of size and appearance, it is regarded as the Earth's twin. Pluto was previously as of August 2006 regarded as a planet. However, it was decided in a meeting of International Astronomical Union that Pluto-like other astronomical objects such as Ceres 2003, UP 313, discovered recently may be referred to as dwarf planets. The Earth is the third nearest planet to the Sun. In size, it is the fifth largest planet. It is slightly flattened at the poles. That is why its shape is described as a geoid. Geoid means an Earth-like shape. Geoid is form that resembles the Earth. Only on Earth are there likely to be conditions that allow for life. The temperature of the planet is just right. It has air and water. These two things we absolutely need to survive. Life-sustaining gases like oxygen are present in the air. The Earth is a special planet in the solar system as a result of these factors. The Earth appears blue from space because water covers two-thirds of its surface. As a result, it is referred to as a blue planet. The Moon is the sole satellite of our planet. It merely has fourth the diameter of the Earth. Because it is closer to our planet than other celestial bodies, it appears to be much larger. About 384,400 kilometers separate us from it. You may now compare the distances between the Earth and the Moon and the Sun. It takes the Moon around 27 days to orbit the Earth. One spin takes precisely the same amount of time. As a result, we can only see one side of the Moon from the Earth. There are no conducive environments for life on the Moon. On its surface, there are mountains, plains, and depressions. On the surface of the Moon, these create shadows. These shadows can be seen when you look at the full moon. Apart from the stars, planets, and satellites, there are numerous tiny bodies which also move around the sun. These bodies are called asteroids. They are found between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. Scientists are of the view that asteroids are parts of a planet which exploded many years back. The term meteoroid refers to the tiny rocks that orbit the sun. These meteoroids occasionally approach the Earth and have a tendency to fall upon it. Because of the friction with the air throughout this process, they become heated and burn. A bright flash results from it. Sometimes a meteor hits the Earth partially burned, leaving a hollow in its wake. Do you notice a broad whitish band that resembles a white shining line cutting through the night sky? Millions of stars make up this stellar cluster. This band is Milky Way galaxy. Its component is our solar system. It was thought to be a river of light flowing in the sky in prehistoric India. So it was given the name Akash Ganga. A galaxy is a vast collection of stars as well as dust and gaseous clouds. The universe is made up of millions of such galaxies. It is challenging to grasp just how vast the cosmos is. Researchers are currently working to learn more about it. Although we are unsure of its extent, we do know that 
the cosmos includes you and me so thanks for watching see you in the next video